So the only thing left for us to talk about now is uh, stock market and policies. So let's talk about a couple of things, okay? Uh, let's start off with talking about an expansionary uh, monetary policy. Think back to what you had learned in ECO 207. Uh, I'm going to draw the diagram now. You guys should remember this. So we have Y, R. This is IS. This is LM. We have our equilibrium. Let's call it A. This is the policy rate. And this is the equilibrium output that we have. Now, government enacts our expansionary monetary policy. Uh, what does that mean? That means that the policy rate is going to go down. As a result, LM is going to fall. And we end up in this situation. Okay, we have a new output. And of course, this has fallen. Will this always happen? Can we be sure that uh, this is going to... No, no, actually what I mean is, uh, what will happen to stock prices? So the government has lowered the interest rate in the economy. As a result, the economy has expanded. What do we expect to happen to stock prices? And the answer is not as straightforward as some of you might be thinking. Because remember, in ECO 207, we were just thinking of one period. Now we also have to think about expectations. And when you bring expectation into it, the important thing is that if this expansionary monetary policy it can be contractionary monetary policy as well it doesn't make a difference uh, let's just write monetary policy if this monetary policy is expected expected then stock price will not change so here's the important question why won't it change if people already expected this specific monetary policy to take place. That's because if people already expected this fall to occur, then the stock prices will already reflect a lower future interest rate. Okay. Uh, because suppose this happened in 2021, okay? In 2020, if you expected the government to lower the interest rate, then your valuation of the stock price in 2020 already reflects a lower interest rate in the future. If we come up here, so when we're calculating the real stock price, uh, what when we take this uh, interest rates into account, or if we go back here, uh, see here we have uh, in period T, when we're looking at the price, we are taking into account the price in period T plus one. Price, uh, sorry, interest rate in period T plus one, T plus one, T plus one. So if we expect interest rates to go down before the interest rates are already lowered, well, then we've already taken it into account. So if this change is expected, there will be no changes in the stock prices. However, if this monetary policy is at least partially unexpected, it doesn't have to be completely unexpected, but at least partially unexpected, then uh, stock prices 
will rise. Why? For two reasons. First of all, remember, we've talked about this before. When interest rates go down, stock prices go up, right? And B, Y has gone up. That means that outputs are high, income is high, and because of all these factors, people are going to be more capable or more willing to buy stock as a result, stock prices will go up. Uh, so important takeaway, whenever monetary policy is enacted, if that policy is expected, there will be no changes to the stock market. If it's unexpected, then uh, in this case, of course, we are talking about in this example, we're talking about an expansionary monetary policy. It can be contractionary as well. But if it's at this partially unexpected, then there will be some changes. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about uh, an expansionary fiscal policy. Okay. Suppose what happens is, oh, let me draw another diagram. I think that's better. So we have Y. R. This is IS. This is LM. So this is the policy rate. Suppose that A, we have our equilibrium. Now, what happens is for whatever reason, I shifts. Now, this can be because G has gone up, this can be because T has gone down. It doesn't matter. I says shift here. So we are in this place where at the same interest rate, notice uh, higher output. So once again, same question. What will happen to stock prices? So let's try and answer that. And the same thing, if this is expected, nothing changes. Because if we've expected this to happen, then the pricing already reflects this change. But if unexpected, then also there are a few things that can happen. If this is unexpected, if suddenly there is a, a rise in Y, uh, what the people will do is uh, look at the central bank. What might the central bank do? If the central bank does nothing, okay? If the central bank does nothing, then of course y has gone up because y has gone up incomes are higher output is high production is high and so overall stock prices will go up however because of this sudden rise in y if the feds think that this may lead to uh, inflation and as a result what the feds want to do now is increase the policy rate so that we go back to the original level we go back to y star again so policy rate has gone up if this were to happen then look our y went up we may call this an expansionary fiscal policy but because feds are worried that this may cause inflation, they also increases the policy rate, Ellen curve shifts up, we end up in the same place, and as a result, nothing happens. Nothing happens to the stock prices. Okay, and of course, we've used an example of expansionary fiscal policy, but you guys can derive the case for uh, for a contractionary fiscal policy, okay? And so that's it. That's the end of the first chapter.